So I'm putting this video together. This is a third hand. I've heard him called a TIG finger. I don't know, you can call it whatever you want. So uh, I'm putting this video together. This is the first project that I have my students make in a blueprint reading and fabrication class. So in this video, I'm gonna show you, we're just gonna do a quick uh, drawing, orthographic. I do a front and a top view of it. We scale it down for the most part, uh, and I'll kind of explain what I do. Uh, but what is this tool used for? Well, you can see it's holding up these T's here, right? You can put it with a lap, a T, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, one of the other things that I'll do with it sometimes is, you know, if I have two tables that are connected for fabricating something large, and maybe my ground's always connected to the one, I mean, it's a great way to, you can bridge uh, a gap with it. And I haven't done it with these, but I was thinking about putting some, uh, maybe TIG brazing the end of this and then sharpening it again. Uh, just to have some copper there and maybe some copper on the bottom uh, feet of this. Just a little bit better connection with that copper so that way uh, you can bridge the gap with your electricity. Uh, so it's just a weighted arm that comes up with a finger and then I sharpen the point on it so it'll actually stick uh, to the metal and grab onto it. This is 16th inch uh, and it's holding it up great. Now students or uh, somebody on might be watching this right now say, well, what about these magnets? Why don't I use the magnet? Um, and I could, you know, this one here, this is uh, steel. Slide that down. I could go ahead, tack that up, move the magnet because if you have magnetism when you weld, it's just like arc blow, except this will be uh, almost on steroids compared to the arc blow you get with stick and possibly you can get it with TIG as well. Um, sometimes you get thermal arc blow, but anyways, uh, the problem is I'm using aluminum over here. Well, that aluminum is non-magnetic, so this is not gonna help me out at all. Uh, same thing with a lot of your stainless steels, maybe your austenitic series is gonna be non-magnetic. Uh, so you need some other option to go ahead and post up your uh, weld joints, tack them up, and then weld them out. So in this video, I'm going to show you the drawing, and then I'm going to just do a quick run through of how we fabricated it. Uh, super easy to make. You could be a brand new student in welding. You could just be, you know, messing around at home. You don't know much about welding. You could easily make this. So it's a great first project for our students. It's something that they like because they get to take it home. Uh, and it's something more than, you know, some round bar. I'm using three ace round bar. I got a tail down here. Uh, I could have spread it more, you can, if you want to make them bigger, longer, shorter, it doesn't make a difference. But then the key is having the weight on there. So I got about three quarters of an inch of metal. I have two three A's stacked together, circles. Uh, it's just cutoffs that we get, so it worked perfect. I center it up, and then that is gonna be the weight to hold this down. I bend this at a 90, and then I sharpen it, not to a point where I'm gonna stab myself, but it's pretty darn close because on something like that 16th inch. I wanna be able to get that point in there to grab it and it'll actually hold it. Uh, so thanks for watching the video. You'll see what I do in the next uh, couple minutes. And uh, again, if you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe and uh, give me some comments. What else are you looking for? What can I share? I know that blueprint reading is a big one that a lot of people have been asking for, welding symbols. Uh, I'm slowly working on those things. Uh, a little bit at a time, okay, but I appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. All right, so here's a quick sketch of the third hand project. Um, only did a two view, so I did a front, and we're calling this the top. Um, that's all you really need for something like this. You don't need anything too elaborate. Uh, it's only about five pieces. You have one, two, three and then four or five, and I double stack these because we get a lot of these cut off pieces. Um, if you have like a chunk of inch thick plate, you mean you wouldn't only need one piece. Uh, it's important that this piece here is uh, heavy because you want it to be able to hold down the material or lock it into place uh, correctly. So for our class, we are just picking any sizes. It's pretty random. Uh, we're using three ace round bar for the body of this thing and this is the top view of it and then we just cut these like four inch pieces for the tail um, which helps uh, keep it stabilized um, if you will 
I'm just kind of locking it into place uh, so it doesn't teeter-totter or anything like that. I did a quarter inch to one scale on everything except for the thickness of this bar um, and the thickness of this plate just because it would be, uh, I believe, 330 seconds. So it would have kind of looked weird a little bit in the drawing. So I kind of, it says it's scaled quarter to one. It's not completely scaled quarter to one, but uh, for a simple drawing like this, it was fine. Uh, anyways, um, all I have is uh, my length. Going uh, 18 to this turn, I got three and a half to this point here. I got four inch uh, pieces for the tail. I'm using a 45 degree angle. You could use uh, whatever angle you want. And then all I'm doing is stacking a couple plates. I went about five inches down. Um, I kind of want that weight a little bit towards the front. Um, I don't necessarily need it centered. I want a little bit more towards the front. So that weight is then on that uh, point up there. And uh, you know, I got, uh, you know, a weld symbol um, here. I did not actually put a specific one in there uh, for this. All. I didn't draw them in there because in my particular class, uh, we have not covered welding symbols quite yet. And all they're really doing here is tacking it together, and that's okay. Uh, like I said, this is a perfect beginner project for anybody. Anybody could make this. You don't really need many welding skills or fab skills whatsoever to make this. But the rest of the video is a quick clip of us uh, putting these together and again, it's something you can use in your shop uh, Take it to your school wherever you're taking welding classes. Maybe they allow you to, to bring it in and then uh, Use it to lock in your pieces tack them up and weld them up. So uh, here's the video of It being assembled